everyone. My name is Lashana Ayer, and this is my fifth bar. And I'm truly honored to be counted among the top 10 finalists in the prestigious national 3M Young Scientist Challenge, a collaboration between Discovery Education and 3M. Have you ever paused to imagine the world without colors, without the ability to see the smiles on your loved ones' faces, or the beauty of nature? Close your eyes for a moment and think about how challenging it would be to navigate a world you can't see. Now, consider the profound impact of being unable to communicate with those around you in the same way. Imagine the isolation and frustration that might come with it. But today, I want to share a remarkable device that has the power to bring light to the lives of those who live in darkness, both figuratively and literally. This device isn't just about technology. It's about enabling connection, independence, and empowerment. Reflecting on the genesis of my Braille device, my inspiration stemmed from the extensive research on Braille literacy. Learning that only 7.8% of blind children are proficient in Braille and considering the staggering global figure of 285 million visually impaired individuals with 39 million being blind, I felt compelled to take action. This drive felt me to conceive the Tactile Electronic Braille Display Device, or TEP. Its purpose was dual to aid children in learning Braille and to convert regular text into Grain 1 Braille. Today, I'm thrilled to introduce the TEP 2.0, which boasts an impressive array of new features. Display of contracted Braille, integration with an app to receive messages and transmit electronic signals to solenoids for precise Braille representation. Display of capital letters and numerals, operation at 5 volts and 2.5 amperes, synchronization of LEDs, displays with solenoids for simultaneous Braille symbol representation. Facilitation of Braille education by enabling Braille teaching through text transmission. A succinct overview of my project reveals its components. An Arduino, no, solenoids, a display, LEDs, a breadboard, an HCR05 Bluetooth module, transistors, and jumper wires. The casing is thoughtfully crafted by 3M materials. The device can connect to an app and receive messages, subsequently converting regular text into Braille. The significance of my project is profound and it bridges a crucial communication gap for the blind community and plays a pivotal role in Braille literacy education for children. this incredible chance to team up with a real-life superhero, Mark Gilbertson, who just happens to be a 3M scientist. This experience was beyond amazing. Mark is just absolutely awesome. He's been like a true gift to me and he shared some seriously fantastic tips and tricks that have let me explore new things. That's really, really cool. I learned so much from him and I'm super excited about the idea of being a scientist just as awesome as he is. Meeting him at 3M headquarters in Minnesota is something I'm really, really looking forward to. The mentorship program has been like a treasure trove of knowledge and gave me the guidance I needed to steer clear of potential problems. With Mark's guidance, I managed to handle challenges way better and make my project even better too. What is one word to summarize this summer mentorship? Exciting. Been really fun to work with you and seeing some of the other projects as well. So I've, behind the scenes, I got to see multiple interviews and it's fun to see the passion of kids. One word to summarize me. Curious. I think you're exceedingly curious. First meeting that we had, you explained what a transistor was to me. So I think you're you're very curious to go and do your own research and go search things out on your own, which is a very good skill to have if you're going into science, engineering, math, et cetera. What was the toughest challenge we faced together? I think it's been logistics. So dealing with you being in India, me being in the U.S., 12-hour <laughs> difference. Yeah. Uh, was there like a wow moment that stands out in the whole mentorship? 
in our second meeting, non-technical anything, you set an agenda, which I was exceedingly impressed by because I don't think I've ever seen anybody going into sixth grade set a meeting agenda the second time. If you had to give like one tip or advice for me, what would it be? I mean, other than staying curious, I guess the biggest tip that doesn't that I still struggle with is to keep taking notes. When I've done that in my coursework or in grad school, I used to write way more notes. I would always keep a stack of printer paper at my desk (laughs) and that's what I would scribble on. And then anything that was useful would go into my folder. Funny moments you would like to share? I think it's funny when you're sitting there and your camera's working, your microphone's working, and then it's just us playing telephone back and forth and we can't see anything. (laughs) <laughs> it's both funny and frustrating, but it tends to be more funny in the, the moment. Okay, uh, looking back, what's the best moment? Well, one, I don't think we've hit the best moment. I think that's when I'm actually going to meet you in yeah. October. Uh, yeah. So I think that's going to be the best part because I like meeting people in person. I almost think for me, one of the coolest things that I, I saw that you did was some of the background research where you found a University of Michigan professor and reached out to them. As somebody that went through grad school, I think it's very cool you did that because a lot of people, a lot of times people find professors very intimidating. <laughs> so just that you went and did that to me, it was almost the best moment of like, wow, you reached out to a professor and they got back to you, which does yeah. not usually happen. <laughs> what did you enjoy teaching me during our mentorship? I've enjoyed going through the scientific method with you the most. Like this is how I go through go about tackling a problem and just kind of working through that with you. And then this is sort of how I I look at things. So I've enjoyed passing some of those skills along. What's the top skill I need to be a like a cool scientist like you? So resilience would be your biggest skill. It's always just the grind of you have to go through high school, then you have to go through four years of college. And if you do robotics, that's four years of intense and, you know, mathematics, engineering, from there, it's like you're, you're either finding a job or you're going into grad school. So there's a lot of just resilience of here's where I want to be. I have to really push to keep going through all of the steps. Do you think you'd want to be a scientist or more engineer? Both. As I conclude my final blog entry, I want to extend my heartfelt appreciation for this incredible opportunity. Being a finalist in 3M and Scientist Challenge and participating in the summer mentorship program has been an immensely enriching journey. It provided me with the chance to connect with a real-life hero and scientist, Mark Gilbertson. Throughout this exper- remarkable experience, I've undergone significant personal and intellectual growth. 